Hello everyone and welcome to the Metal Gladiator podcast. My name is Ian Savane and I am the Metal Gladiator. On this episode, I am joined by my brother, William Savane. Say hi. Introduce yourself. What's up, Metalheads? I'm his brother, William. Uh, I mainly collect movies, but I love me some metal too. Oh, yeah. So, let's just get right into things. Got so, got a good one today. The second episode has got to be good. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk about the thing that would probably will be the shortest section, and that is the anticipation of Ramstein's newest album. It's been like, what, 10 years since their last one? 10 years. And it's been teased for like the past... Yeah, it's been teased for like the past two years. Yeah. Uh, last thing, I heard last year that they had like... Like 20 or 30 songs ready for it. Yeah. Like, it's gonna be like massive. Yeah, I hope it is. And I hope it's good. Yeah, it better be 10 years. I know. (laughs) And that's like the thing... You can't, well, I mean, you can't really blame them for having it too late. I mean, they could have had a two-year or three-year gap like most bands do, but I guess they just got preoccupied with other stuff, and then it's like, oh, let's do a new album. It's been so long, and then that builds pressure, you know? Yeah. I think they spent a lot of time touring, uh, more time than they expected um, in the U.S. and whatnot. And uh, I think, uh, and then too, uh, Till Lindemann came out with his solo album, and right. Emigrate put out another album as well. So there was kind of that in between as well to kind of fill the Ramstein gap. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of expecting all the members to do solo albums, honestly. That would have been kind of cool, though. Yeah. (coughs) What would a flaky... Oh, oh, a flake solo album sound like? (laughs) (laughs) That would be so cool. (laughs) Yeah. It would sound more... It would be more on the lines of, like, Jordan Rudis... Solo album, which is the keyboardist of Dream Theater. He does some solo stuff, so it would probably be a lot like that. Just all keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. There was so much anticipation for this album. So much so that it's gotten to the point, the more news they release about it, the more I don't care about any other releases <laughs> yeah not that I'm like not excited for new albums by this and that band and <coughs> stuff but it's like Ramstein's new album is the one you know that it's the album of 2019 possibly 2020 but I don't think so I think it's coming out this year I should hope so it's supposed to I think yeah. Last, uh, last I heard, I think last, the last I was hearing was like spring 2019, maybe, is what they were talking about. Hmm. So, yeah. I could see that happening because last month I saw a Facebook story of them announcing that they'll. Fin- finishing up the mixing of the album. Okay. Yeah, it's not, that's they're probably close to close to having it ready then. Yeah. Because the article when I saw that they had like I can't remember exactly how many it was, but it was a lot of songs that they had ready for it. Yeah. And that was uh, I guess fall of last year that I read that. Yeah. 
I'll, I kind of want them to just release the album and don't release like <coughs> two or three sing singles. Just release the album. Yeah. Because there's so much hype for it that it's like if you release a single, it just feel like yeah. another album release. Yeah. Like with most bands. Because, I mean, a 10-year gap is long. Yeah. I thought and we I had to like... wait a long time for the Iron Maiden album. I know. <laughs> Even longer like, for Randy. If you're going to wait 10 years and then release an album, like, this is just from my point of view. I wouldn't worry about singles or anything to get people more excited for it. People are already going to be excited for it, so just release the album. Just set a date. Be like, this is the album. Set it up for pre-order. All that. <clears throat> yeah. And speaking of pre-order, if they do, like, pre-order CD and vinyl and stuff, I'm doing that. I'm definitely pre-ordering this oh, album. Yeah. yeah, that'd be awesome. Like, I don't care if it, if I got, like, Fifty dollars left in my account. If their <laughs> album comes out, and it's like gonna take up all my money just to pre-order everything. Everything if they possibly do like three different colored vinyl releases of it, uh, I'm gonna pre-order all of it. <laughs> I'm gonna go broke when this album announces, comes yeah. public, and is like, "Hey, is this up for pre-order?" <laughs> Yeah. That's something else I want to touch on. Ramstein colored vinyl needs to happen. Mm -hmm. It needs to happen. I mean, you know, I haven't gotten looked at anything, but I've never even noticed any of their stuff on vinyl. Yeah, well, I mean, like I've when got... I started seeing the stuff coming into the stores and whatnot. Yeah. And whatnot, I'm sure. Yeah, I've seen a couple on eBay pretty much seen a copy of each of their albums and they're all just like regular the like the classic black vinyl you know don't have a colored yeah. vinyl mm. which I think they do because if they kind of like do colored vinyl like I can I can see a Mutter colored vinyl with the same kind of color that is the artwork that would yeah. be awesome yeah and then a Holzenholt, which is like snow, like a mm. white, snowish like yeah. vinyl. It needs to happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. For sure. Hopefully we can get a spring release on this. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I hope so. It's been a long wait. Long wait. I don't know if I would have made it without the Emma Great album and the Lindemann album coming out, honestly. I know. It is a good thing that they did that because they probably would have <coughs> just, like, killed their entire fan base. <laughs> what a fan base we would have killed ourselves because we just can't take our, our world without Ramstein. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, this is my anticipation for it. I want like a 32 or something double disc album. I think that would be awesome. Expect that, that kind of concept for an album would be great for like yeah. this long of a gap. Yeah. But yeah. So, any other thoughts on that? Uh, when they come into mind. Yeah. We'll, we'll just say it's been 10 years again. We'll say that for the next, yeah. like, 20 minutes. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it was 2009, I think, when Leave oh, yeah. This all the Doc. Yeah. 
it, it was an awesome time because like 2009, Libis for all of came out, and then like 2010, The Final Frontier came out for Iron Maiden, and then like nothing for the next few years until uh, whenever. When was Book of Souls? When did Book, Book of, Souls of Souls was 2015? So that was half the time that Ramstein's yeah. waiting for their album. Yeah. I was thinking Book of Souls was longer than that, but maybe not. Yeah. It oh, felt longer cool. when you were looking for it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because at that point, I was like, dang, it's been like five, six years since I've gotten any Iron Maiden or Ramstein. It's like my yeah. two favorite bands in the world, and it's a long gap on them, so. Yeah. Yeah. So... This uh, next album that we're going to be talking about. I remember when I was texting you a couple of days ago about the album. I was like, hey, what have you been listening to? And you were like, oh, I've been listening to Toxicity by System of a Down. The next day, I go into Second and Charles over here. And I see all System of a Down albums for like 20 bucks each. And I had oh, to yeah. get Toxicity because it is their best album. Oh yeah, but it's just funny that we were just talking about it and we were just planning this podcast and it was like, okay, let's talk about this album. And then I get it on vinyl the next day. <laughs> so yeah, and I don't yeah. have any of their stuff on CD either. I just that's mm. my only thing in my collection is the vinyl. Yeah, I saw your your Instagram post of of the vinyl, and so I was wondering if you already had it and just hadn't posted it and you decided to post it because we were talking about it or if you yeah. went out and bought it <laughs> yeah that, that that was the story there <laughs> but like i wasn't looking for it because what caught my eye was the first album actually with the oh yeah with the hand for the cover yeah. out and i was like ooh, so i started flipping through it i had no plans i originally had no plans to buy a vinyl that day <laughs> don't make those kind of plans because you're gonna buy buy a vinyl. Yeah. But yeah, uh, this album <clears throat> it's pretty great. Yes, yes, it is. Um, so I actually started listening to it recently because um, I had been listening to uh, several of the old school uh, thrash metal Metallica uh, but I had been listening to that for a while I was getting tired of it and ready to move on to something else and then uh, I saw Anthony Fantano did a review on YouTube of it and so I was like hey I want to listen to that <laughs> yeah so that's um, kind of what where my, like, I knew about it and everything, but it was just like, I didn't know what I wanted to listen to, and then I saw his review on YouTube and was like, oh, that's what I want to listen to. Yeah. So I started doing that too. Okay. My car. Um, what would you say is your favorite song? Besides the obvious one. <laughs> <laughs> Besides Chop Suey. Oh, yeah. Well, is Chop Suey your favorite song? I don't know. It's just, it's so good, and it's like the most famous one. Uh, I don't know. I. It's definitely up there. Yeah, cause I'd have um, to say that it's not for me. Really? Yeah, I'd have to say that um, Aerials is my favorite. I was thinking Aerials too. It's so good. If I did like a top three songs, it'd be Aerials, Chop Suey, and um. Uh. Crap. Uh, the second song. Tapeworm? What is that one? Deer Dance. I think. Let me it's see. Deer Dance? I've got the vinyl right here. Yeah. At number two, where is that, you know, call the tapeworm out yet? Needles. Needles, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in my room with a needle in my hand. Yeah, that one. I love that one. Yeah. I like the energy. Of the, yeah. the band. It's... System of a Down's... Not necessarily their heaviness, but their energy. 
of yeah. the music reminds me of Slipknot, where you know uh, it's yeah. got like that super energy that makes you want to like stop moving around, you know, stop moshing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they kind of have that same energy. When it is heavy, but I mean it's not like death metal or anything. Yeah, you know what I mean it's heavy yeah, and it's got that moment. awesome energy. And his voice is so unique too. Like you're never gonna have another one who sounds like him, you know? No. And the unique lyrics definitely help with his voice, because it's like. Yeah. <laughs> You're never gonna have lyrics like that within any, any other band, and you're never gonna have the, that kind of vocal style with any other band. Right. <laughs> so the two work perfectly together. Yeah, they're very unique. Um, it's it's kind of a shame that they uh, that they didn't last very long. <laughs> yeah. That their career was kind of cut short there. Yeah, that was. Decently recent too, wasn't it? So I was hearing what stuff that they were gonna try to do a new album, and then oh, really? started really? hearing about this and that, and this person said that, and not getting paid or something. Mm. Yeah. I know. I just I don't really know much about why they, had the, you know, why they broke up or whatever, why they weren't around for very long. I just know that they. I only had a couple of albums, really, and then we're done. Yeah, they had four, I think. Four? Is that what it was? Yeah, because they had... I know, the one with the hand... Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. The one with the hand. Because they had, like, the two... And then toxicity, after and then Toxicity. Album. Yeah, that were kind of like... Album or whatever, and then Hypnotize. Yeah. Memorize and Hypnotize. That was like a... Double album, oh. almost. Oh, was it? Oh, was yeah, it and then they had Steal This Album. Yeah. so the, stupid. The, but yeah, I so was they only, had five. I was only thinking, okay, five. So I was only thinking of uh, Toxicity, the one with the hand, and Hypnotize. I forgot about Steal This Album, and I completely forgot about Mesmerize or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, that's... So that's a pretty good run. I, I wouldn't say any... I haven't heard all the albums all the way through, except for the first... Two, the first one, this I think it was a self-titled. Is that they, what it was? Yeah, the, I think the only one I've heard off that is uh, Sugar. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good album. And then I for Toxicity. I've only heard <laughs> the first two all the way through, but heard yeah. some other songs here and there from the other albums. But like, it seems like the song there was one of those... is really good. The what? The song Hypnotize is really good, yeah. but I haven't heard anything else off the album. Have you heard Lonely Day? Oh, yeah. Which, which one is that off? I was about to ask you that. Okay, I'm not sure, remember. but yeah, I have heard that song. Yeah, and then BYOB. Oh, yeah. Those it might be both off of their self-titled, I think, maybe. No, that one was on Hypnotize or Memo... Mem Mem Memorize. Oh, it was really? on one of those ones. Can't oh. remember. What? So yeah, yeah, I really don't know all that much about them, but Toxicity is a great album. I've listened to that one so many times through. Oh yeah. And I like to it. The. Something, too, that stands out about Toxicity is um, they uh, they go from having, like, serious songs with deeper meanings to with, like, you know, Chop Suey and stuff like that, and then to, like, songs that literally they've admitted doesn't really mean anything at all, like Jet Pilot. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so, like, it's it's just such a perfect balance of seriousness and goofiness that, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like it could ever be replicated. Yeah. That's something that they're, that's kind of like 
just a system of a down thing because like I remember in an interview because they have some songs that are kind of more political and in an interview I think yeah. the drummer was saying oh the, the drummer or the bassist I can't remember who but he was saying that we're not playing in Turkey because they don't want us playing these certain songs oh yeah and he was saying, like, there's no disrespect to the fans. We just don't want to do this because if, a, like, the government or whatever says, if you're going to play here, you can't play this, this, and that. Yeah. That's taken away our right to even write those songs in the first place. Yeah, and their stuff is very political. Yeah. They're Armenian, too. Yeah, yep, yep. So... Yeah, and I'm pretty, and they don't deny the Armenian genocide. So, <laughs> oh, what's his name? Tank would be proud. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, just the how ridiculous songs like Jet Pilot and Bounce are, and then how like serious songs like. Uh, you know, prison song and chop suey aerials, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's all over the place, but it works so well. Yeah. They're all over the place, too, on stage <laughs> and going back and forth. Yeah. But, yeah, like, um, this is one of those albums that go by so fast, too. You get so into it by the first song that it, all the other songs just go by, and the and the album is like forty minutes, and it's like a quick forty minutes. You know, it's one of those kind of albums. Yeah. It's like most albums are roughly like forty minutes anyway. But yeah, it doesn't feel like a very long album. Yeah. Which is definitely good, and that definitely helps with like. Pretty much all of the songs, except for like Ariel's, are like heavy. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's got that pumped up energy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Prison song. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah. I know how to and play I it. And it's really fun. Yeah. Uh, when I was watching uh, Anthony Fantano's review there on YouTube, um, I didn't realize that the the album was actually pre nine eleven. It came out before nine eleven uh, happened. Right? With some of the stuff that they're talking about, the political stuff, like it feels like after nine eleven. So it's like yeah. it's almost as if it becomes more relevant as time goes on. Yeah. Which is impressive. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to to sing about stuff that is happening, but it's one it's another thing when you're like twenty years later or whatever and you're like Oh man, this is still relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Um one song well, I mean, all the songs stand out to me, but one song that I feel is kind of underrated, goes kind of under the radar, is Forest. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. the grooviness of it. The beat is really catchy and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, Aqua is another underrated one that kind of... One of the lesser songs on the album, but it's still really good. Yeah. That, I don't know if you pronounce it Atwa or if it's just like A T W A or whatever, but Atwa, yeah. whatever. Atwa. 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 Have to look up. Atwa. Have to look up it live, and if the single introduces it, or <coughs> if he even introduces the song at all, but if he comes up yeah. and he's like, "This next song is called Atwa." Atwa. <laughs> that would have been. That would be so funny. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty great. <laughs> okay, I do need to look at the album here, though. 
because I need to be reminded of some of the other songs. Dear Dance. Good song. Jet Psycho. Pilot. Oh, yeah. Psycho. Go crazy. Go crazy. And the first ever song that we ever heard was Shimmy because it was on oh, the yeah. uh Tony Hunt's Pro Skater Four. Yeah. I believe. It was on that Oh man, that's so old now. But Playstation yeah. Two game. Yeah. Hold yeah. that. <laughs> that wasn't even the first one that we played either. Like Tony Hawk yeah. Pro Skater Two on Playstation One was the first and one then... we played. <laughs> oh man. And like there was music from that one <laughs> that uh we discovered too. <laughs> Like, uh, Papa Roach. Yeah. Before, uh, Last Resort or whatever, we were jamming out to, uh, Blood Brothers. <laughs> so. Anything else you want to add to toxicity? Any other comments <coughs> you want to say? Um, I don't think so. Uh... If anyone likes YouTube and stuff and, you know, with the music, uh, definitely, like, check out Anthony Fantano's review on it because he talked really good about it. And I pretty much agree with everything he said, too, so. Yeah. But, yeah, like, I pretty much like every aspect of it. Drums, bass guitar and music and stuff the vocals and lyrics and that's something else too because kind of like what you said how the lyrics get from serious and goofy sometimes you can yeah. kind of tell that with the guitar that it kind of yeah. like the guitar <laughs> kind of gets goofy too because like it's real yeah. heavy during prison song and then the First and second verse, it's got that dun, 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 <laughs> little yeah. part, you know. So it, the guitar itself, yeah. like the music too, gets goofy in the serious songs, you know. And the ones, yeah. in the song that's like lyrically se very serious song, you know. It's got goofy yeah. guitar. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, I like this album. Definitely <coughs> recommend it. And I do too. I would probably give it a eight out of ten. I'd probably give it the same, eight out of ten. Pretty good rating. Yeah, really good rating. Yeah. But yeah, toxicity, system of a down, eight out of ten. And I definitely do recommend you start listening to more of their other stuff because. I have yeah, heard sure. the f whole first album. It's really good. It's yeah. very, I mean, all their music's similar because, I mean, it's System of Down. I haven't right. heard a whole lot of, from the other ones, but... This is still all good. So. Let's move on. And to this next section... final section of the podcast and I say oh, final I but one okay yeah uh cause <clears throat> so I just wanted to see if you feel the same way about this um before uh before I was listening to Toxicity I was listening to the the Thrash albums from Metallica the early stuff, you know, um, a lot. Yeah. And I found myself, you know, listening to And Justice for All, Master of Puppets, Ride the Lightning, you know. I'd listen to them through a few times each before switching off to something else. But I'd never put in um, Kill Em All. And, you know, I like the album Kill Em All. But I was just kind of thinking about, like, why I don't revisit that one as much even though I like it 
And so I was thinking about this, and I was like, I think it's, you know, not because, not because I don't like it, but because when I listen to it, I just know and can hear in the back of my mind, like, songs like Seek and Destroy would have been so much better with Mustaine's voice. Yes. Like, so many of those songs, and, you know, he wrote, like, all of them practically, but, like, I just, I find myself thinking, man, this song would have been better if Mustaine was on it. And I think that's maybe why I don't go back to revisit Kill 'Em All like I do the other Metallica albums. Because even though, you know, it's probably the purest in Thrash, it's not as much metallic the Metallica that they were because that wasn't their stuff. Yeah. As much as it was Mustang stuff. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that. I honestly find myself kind of doing the same I mean I haven't really like recently or hardly ever gone back and listened to the whole albums of like Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets you know but like yeah. Kill Em All in my mind is more of a Megadeth album than Metallica yeah yeah it's like Megadeth had yeah. Have Megadeth on it, and I yeah. think that's why. <laughs> it's like Megadeth <coughs> always had like a two-part debut album, "Kill 'Em All" and then "Killing Is My Business," which kind of makes sense because yeah. they both have "Kill" in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So yeah, I just I've been thinking about that recently because I was like, you know, it's it's like that one being like the purest of the, of thrash metal. <laughs> You know, like, or at oh, least yeah. for Metallica's purest thrash metal. Like, why do I find myself not wanting to listen to that one the way that I listen to Ride the Lightning and Master Puppets, you know? And I, I think that's why. I think it's because it feels more Mustang to me than, than the Metallica that actually played it for the album. Yeah. Yeah, I, to I totally agree. And it's, kill, honestly, Kill It Mall is probably the only album I actually buy. Because. Mm -hmm. This isn't saying that I think all their albums are bad or anything like that. Even though some of them are. <clears throat> Saint Angle. <laughs> They've had a lot of bad albums. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, like, I just can't bring myself to my money down and support them yeah because of how they are you know the stuff with Dave Mustaine because that's one reason why the big four split up you know and recently or whatever a couple years ago whenever they stopped doing big four shows because they were going to Mustaine and like we're gonna re-release Kill Em All we got this other song or something that you had a part of. We we're going to release on it. And then they basically said, you're not going to get any credit. And Dave Mustaine was like, screw you. Jeez. So, I mean, that's, that's the, I don't know if you ever heard that, but that's basically like I the reason. I think about that. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, that's, that makes me... that's basically the reason why the Big Four's not doing and, those yeah, concerts. The last thing I knew was that they had kind of talked to each other and kind of made up. And then they were doing the big four shows, and I had no idea about that. Yeah. So. Dang. Yeah. That and kind then, of... you know, the whole thing with, like, Lars Ulrich, like, going after people for copyright stuff with the yeah. downloading off the internet and, like, suing people over it. It's like, yeah. come on, man. You're making millions. Like, you, just chill Metallica out. has made their own record label. Yeah, you're the real. only you're like the first band to play in Antarctica. <laughs> what more do you want? Yeah. I've heard that they no, you know, that was a different band. Never mind. But yeah, like I just can't bring myself to really support them, and even with Kill 'Em All, which is kind yeah. of their best album, 
Yeah. I'd say kind of because it's not really Metallica. Right, right. But like even Kill 'Em All, I'm still like very hesitant about. Because every time I go in like Bones and Noble, I see that Kill 'Em All vinyl, only twenty dollars. You know, I see Master of Puppets and Ride the Lightning there too, but they look cool. But I just can't bring myself to buy them because I just can't support that band. You know, yeah. if a band is like honest and they're because like I know it's you separate like the art from the artist kind of thing but yeah. if like if the artists or the musicians are just basically like that I'm not going to yeah. support their own music yeah I just yeah you can uh, appreciate their music after they're like dead and gone or something and separate the artist from the <laughs> art at that point like yeah. but while they're alive and greedy like this yeah don't don't yeah like i i have the the old thrash metals uh, albums from them from you know you know i had like all the metallic albums back when i was yeah. a teenager and i've gotten rid of most of them like i i pretty much only kept the the first five, I guess. Yeah. I do keep the Black Album because I like it as a rock album. Yeah. I think it's a good rock album, but it is not a thrash album, and it is their sellout point. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, but yeah, Megadeth... Uh, yeah. What's up? Sorry. Megadeth had an awesome rock album, too, which I definitely want to go more into on a possibly another episode of the podcast but risk oh, yeah. such oh, an yeah. underrated album people <laughs> hate it but i i love it <laughs> but yeah um yeah but like with the metal scene metallica is really the only band that's like that that i really yeah. say that i can't support this band because of how they act and how greedy they are Every other right. band, I suppose. They're more about the music, usually, like most metal bands, you know? Yeah. like obviously. That's why they have, you know, the best fans. That's why. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm buying, especially recently, because we, North Carolina, Fayetteville doesn't have a FYE anymore. Oh, but yeah. even then, I'd still probably do this with certain albums, because they don't have it. I've been buying off of record labels websites. You know, oh, yeah. That's keeping it real. I'm not like finding it for cheap on eBay, which is nice sometimes, but like, yeah, buying it from the record label, you know, that's that's a good thing. It's showing yeah. support, yeah. not just to the band, but to the record label, so that they can keep yeah. releasing, helping these bands release stuff, you know. Yeah. But yeah. You don't have an FYE anymore. Wow. Yeah, that was a while ago. It was... I feel like it was out before I actually <coughs> moved here. Mm. Or just going out or something. You have a second in Charles, though. I don't have yeah. a second in Charles here in Kentucky. Yeah, but <laughs> second in Charles doesn't really release new albums or stuff. Yeah, yeah but you, do, you are able to find yeah. new stuff way better than I am. Yeah. And Second Charles is owned by Books a Million, so I can get some get I can get a hold of some Books a Million Second Charles exclusives and stuff. Mm. Not yeah. FYE exclusives, but okay. So I guess for this last part of the, of the last section of the podcast, go into the top ten, top five list. Which is actually a top five this time. Yep. Let me get out my notes. I have it on my notes here. I, I have it written down too. Go ahead and introduce it since you were the one that came up with it. Okay, yeah. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, Ramstein is like my second favorite band ever. And it's what made me want to take German in high school and stuff. So, I thought, you know, most people have, have at least heard of Ramstein. So I thought we'd do like a top uh, five German bands other than Ram. Um, so you can have some more 
uh, German language music to check out in the heavy metal slash hard rock category. Yeah. Now, I actually picked, well, I have an honorable mention that sings mostly in English, I think, but I haven't heard a whole lot. But my number five pick does sing in English, but they're still German. Okay. Do you have an honorable mention? Yeah. I do not have an honorable okay. mention, no. The only reason um, I did, because like both my honorable mention and number five, I've only heard like five songs from each band. So that's why I'm kind of yeah. have them low. But my honorable mention is the uh, power metal band Blind Guardian. Okay. I've heard a few of their songs. The one I really like is the Bald Song. Really good. But yeah. Power Metal, man. You can't go wrong with Power Metal. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me. Uh, Halloween is German, right? Yes, they, they are. So that'll be my honorable mention then. My English language yeah. German friend. Check out Halloween. Oh, yeah. They're good. <laughs> They're... I definitely hold them a lot more than Blind Guardian. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... What's your number five? All right, so my number five is uh, Megahertz. Uh, so they're kind of, I think uh, when I was looking them up, it said industrial metal. They could be kind of considered maybe hard rock too. They're not as heavy, um, but they've got some catchy stuff. Yeah. Well, since they're not technically metal, you can just, you know, screw off with that because this is a Metal Gladiator <laughs> podcast. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm kidding. No, I, I, mean. I'm not limiting so, myself to metal. I am, okay. however, limiting myself to music. This is music-based okay. podcast, obviously. But yeah. So you want to talk about some Miley Cyrus on here or what? Like No, uh... no. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll trash talk them for sure, but... <laughs> Because that's just kind of like a metalhead thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, my number five is a pow- another power metal band. My last power metal band on the list, actually. They, it's surprising because they look like a black metal band. Like they wear all the makeup oh, yeah. and stuff, but they're power metal. And they're called Power Wolf. Oh, I've heard of them. Check out the song. They have a new album that came out, and one of the songs is Demons Are a Girl's Best Friend. That song is so <laughs> cashy. It's it's crazy. It's a, such a good song. I definitely... I've only heard, like, three songs by them. But I'm, I'm highly recommending them already. Only they, three songs, uh, and I'm like... Everyone yeah. needs to listen to this band. Do they sing in English? The songs I've heard, yes. Yeah. So I'm guessing that they might sing in English completely. But I don't know about yeah. Blind Guardian either. Because, like, mm. w- one band I do know that pretty much sings in English completely is Sodom, who's German. Oh. But they have one song that's in German, so... Who knows? They might mm-hmm. have both of the bands, like Blind Guardian and Power Wolf, might have a song or two that's yeah. in German. Yeah. And I didn't put Sodom on here because there was like three or four thrash metal bands that I'm like, and eh, I'm not gonna put them on here because then I won't have any bands that actually sing in German. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> They'll be for another list. Yeah. They're more fitting for top 10 thrash bands anyway. <laughs> Alright, what is your number four? Alright, so my number four is, um, Knorktor. <laughs> so is mine. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, my number four uh, is Knorktor too. Sweet, well we can talk about them together then. Yeah. Um, they do a lot of, um, they actually do a lot of comedy songs. So, but if you don't know any German or don't look it up, you wouldn't know that. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, a lot of their songs are kind of comedic, but they're still... And two, something uh, that really stands out for them that's really impressive is his vocal range. Yeah. Because there are, like, super deep, like, as deep as a voice can get type of um, parts on songs. And then there's parts that are as high-pitched as a guy could ever get, and he does both of them. It's crazy. Yeah. And also, have you seen his, like, tattoo? <laughs> I know. I've seen like, him. His body looks, like, just the color black because of the tattoo he just takes up his whole... <laughs> I know. He, he's in underwear on stage almost every concert. <laughs> yeah. And he's yeah. just up there. <laughs> With this whole <laughs> half body tattoo, it's hilarious. Yeah. Their look is definitely comedic. Like even if you don't know Drummond or don't look him up, if you see their look, you'll be like, okay, this is probably like a comedic band. Yeah. Yeah. They're just goofy. Yeah, yeah. But still make uh, catchy music, heavy music, and yeah. oh yeah, their, their stuff is so good. Yeah. Ma Becker is a good one. Yeah. Um, that, uh, that one shows his vocal range very quickly. It goes from really really deep to really high-pitched really fast. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a ton of other songs that I don't know the titles to. Yeah. I'm just kind of drawing blank. Uh, one... looked meine Augen, meine Augen the Scheiße. It's a good one. <laughs> Yeah, the the one album that's really coming to my mind is this is something else that's very comedic is that it's like half of their heads and then their legs on yeah. the album cover and that's the album that I really like. That's probably my favorite album by them. Yeah, probably the only one. I've, yeah, it's probably the only one I pulled all the way through. Oh yeah, uh, that's the one that has "Mich uh, verflucht meine eigene Scheiße." Okay, it. yeah. That's a great one. Yeah, yeah Konokato. Check him out. Yeah. Have a laugh if you look up the translation. But have a laugh yeah. just watching them too, because oh my goodness. <laughs> Learn German and then listen to all these bands. <laughs> Learn German while you listen to all these bands. <laughs> yeah. It's quite the challenge. Learn German and then listen to these. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... I have the feel. I don't know. They might be a little mixed up, but we me, might have the same top three, but they might not be in the same sections. So we're just going to mm. keep... Uh, what's your number three? My number three is uh, Iceberg Hair. Okay. M mine is not. So, not talk about Iceberg Hair. Okay. Yeah, Iceberg Hair is uh, it's actually the same lead singer as uh, Mega Hair's. Oh yeah, um, it is, isn't it? So they're kind of they're kind of in that same category as Megahertz, kind of industrial metal and sometimes more hard rock. Um, but they do definitely have um, very metal vibes to them sometimes too. Um, they're just they're not the heaviest, but um, but yeah, they got uh, got some good stuff. Uh, Ante Cooper and uh, Forgis My Nisht. It's a good one. Forgis My Nisht is actually a pretty chill, uh, kind of slow song, but it's still yeah. really... Yeah, I'm not going to talk about them too much because they'll follow them on the list. They're on your list too. <laughs> yeah, but um, my number three is Oomph. So, oomph. I won't say anything about them right now. Uh, yeah. I'll let you <laughs> I bet Eisbacher and Oomph are just switched around for us on our list. But, uh, the, my favorite album by them, and really the only one I've heard all the way through, is Monster. That's such a good album. Um,. It's really this album that really got me into the band in the first place. 
because it has such a good mix of songs. Like, the first song's really good. They have a lot of cashy stuff, too. Yeah. I kind of say they're more hard rock than metal sometimes. And that kind of has something to do with, like, their grooviness and cashiness to them. But, like, Labyrinth is a really good one. Yes, that that Um, whole album. The album's called Monster. Yeah. I I really like their album Ego, too. That was a good one. I haven't heard that one all the way through yet. I've heard, like, half of it. But Ego's really good, too. Yeah, um, Oomph. I yeah, recommend and I guess I'll go and start talking about Oomph since they're my number two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they are, yeah, they're a little bit more hard rock, but they are still like the in the wave of the new German hard rock. Uh, new Deutsche Hertha is kind of what the movement or whatever it was called, which Ramstein kind of fits into too, even though they're you know pretty metal most of the time too. But uh, Oomph is actually, like, one of the bands that inspired Ramstein. Like, they've actually been around longer. Um, so, yeah, and they've been around. I, I don't know if they're still making music or not, but they've been around for a long time. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, let's see. Uh, like I said, the, my album Monster is so good. I, I had... I had to special order it from FYE because it was an import, but it, every single song in the album is just top notch. It's so good. Uh, we used to listen to that album all the way through while playing Left for Dead. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Those um, were like the old days of all. That kind of took over the. Uh... A little, um, this is just like a little personal story for anybody who cares, really. But <laughs> we used to play multiplayer on like PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games, especially like fighting games and stuff, and some Medal of Honor and whatnot. But then when we got Xbox 360, we started playing more of like Call of Duty and Left 4 Dead, and then we ended up listening to a lot of German music, which is actually yeah. the way that I hold of all of the bands practically that are on the list, you know, like Oomph, Eyes of Cher, Kanokotor, not Ramstein, yeah. I've heard of Ramstein before that, but those three bands, yeah. I hold them while for the first time while playing a zombie game. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah, highly, highly recommend Oomph. I mean, they're the guys that inspired Ramstein, so, like... <laughs> oh, yeah, you gotta check them out. Yeah, or maybe not completely inspired but uh Ramstein yeah. definitely and they were like an influence to them or whatever yeah. so yeah and i think i could be wrong on this don't quote me on it but monster came out 2008 and then ego mm-hmm. came out 2010 and actually now that i'm really thinking about it i'm pretty sure they had an album come out in 2017 Oh really? They've had so, so they have a lot of albums. Yeah, like they they definitely have all the way good, back in the early nineties. Yeah, like, they definitely have a pretty decent discography. Oh yeah. But yeah, now that I'm just thinking about it, I, I, I is so you might have seen. It, I can't. I don't know, but like they're dressed up as like army men and they're on a tank or something. Have you seen oh, anything? Yeah. yeah, that that came out in 2017. Yeah, you're right. They, I haven't so heard yeah, anything on that good. album though yet. But man, yeah, I gotta get on that. They're probably still pretty active then, which is crazy impressive. They're getting up there with like uh, bands like Ramstein and uh, Iron Maiden, who would just keep making music no matter what. <laughs> yeah, I know won't break up and then come back years later for a reunion they've actually stayed together <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah you get you gotta respect those bands because i mean not saying anything bad about like uh, a band that comes to mind exodus they've kind of broke up and then came back together had a reunion and just like a lot of yeah, bands that were big bands in the too. 80s and 90s did that yeah lots of bands have done that <laughs> 
Not saying anything bad <coughs> about those bands. There's most of them all got gotten back together and are playing now to this day, you know. Yeah. But you got to respect yeah. the bands that, especially yeah. Ramstein. Yeah, Ramstein's like, never had a lineup change. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. They started that's, in like nine. Like their first album came out in like what ninety five, ninety six. Yeah, it was ninety five. A band yeah. that's been playing since the early nineties. Not once it, did they ever have yeah. a lineup change. That yeah, is like, like one the of the most. Only rumor about a lineup change that they had was like, um, like before they were like big, like early, early days before anybody knew who they were. Yeah. They apparently had a different singer. <laughs> <laughs> Which we're not going to know that guy, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like so ever so, there's... since they've put out an album, a thing, yeah, they've never yeah. made a lineup change. It's like, they had a lineup change so early on in their career that we're never going to know who or what he even sound like who sung in the band before Till came in, you know? Yeah. We're never going to know that who that guy <laughs> is. But yeah, uh, my number two is Ice Bushair. And this was something I had, like, I knew who <coughs> five and four was, and I knew who one was, but this is, I have this trouble... With um, top tens or top fives, I mentioned this last episode between the two Cannibal Corpse albums, Torchal and the Skeleton Domain. I have so much trouble with certain two bands or albums or something. Of which one do I like more? Which one do I like less yeah. than this one? But I, I think I like Ice Bashir more because I do like the heaviness. Like Oomph is heavier than Ice Bashir. For the most part, you know, but I think I just like the different vibe that Ice Bushir gives than a lot of the other bands who are more heavy than techno or groovy, you know. And I definitely yeah. love songs like "Forget My Niche," "Eyesight," <laughs> you know. Yeah. "Eyesight" yeah. is a fantastic album. Yeah. Which means ice time for people who don't speak German. Ice time. And Eisbrecher is Eisbrecher. Yep. I know German, yeah. Yeah, I know German, <laughs> yeah. Dude, we should have yeah, done this entire... We should have done this entire podcast with German accents. <laughs> that would have been so weird. Especially when we were talking about System of a Down, an Armenian band. We're talking, we're talking German. <laughs> okay. Anyway, but yeah, Eyes Bashir. Definitely recommend. They're great. And it's one of those <laughs> bands... Another reason why I, I kind of like them more than Oomph is it's one of those bands that I can show non-metalheads and they can still enjoy it. You know? Because they're really yeah. not metal. Right. But very... it's kind of like on the yeah. same level as... It's one of those bands that both metalheads and non-metalheads can come together and enjoy. Yeah. Ooh. <coughs> Not so much because they do get heavy, but Ice Bush Hill for sure. <laughs> Definitely recommend them. Very cashy. Yeah. Number one. You want to go first or you want me to go first? You think it's the same one? I think it's the same one. <laughs> Okay. Probably. Yeah. Uh, let's do this. Uh, on the count of five, we're saying it at the same time. <laughs> See how right. that works. Are you going to say it in German or in English? I'll try to say it in German, but my pronunciation might be bad. Yeah, I can barely. I can't even like pronounce it properly in German. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I say it in German and you say it in English at the same time. I'm just going to say it how I always it. say it. So. Okay. <laughs> five. Four, three, two, one. The apocalyptic yeah, Stein right writer. There. <laughs> that was out of sync, yeah. but whatever. Yeah, I knew, I knew it. That was going to be number yeah. one. Because so we yeah, had... Uh, 
It's very hard to like spell. It's a very difficult I know, word. I definitely spelt it yeah. wrong. Um, Honestly, so you can also find them by looking up the apocalyptic writers or D A R. Those are two other ways you can find them if you cannot st spell apocalypse shine. <laughs> Which I can't. Honestly, the only yeah, okay. German band that has their name in German on this list that I probably spelt right was Oomph. <laughs> I feel like I spelt Kanokator wrong, I spelt Eisbrecher wrong, and I definitely spelled the Apocalyptic Steinleiter wrong. Yeah. I think I might have spelt Power Wolf wrong too. I don't know. I'm kind of stupid sometimes. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Anyway, we're talking about the Apocalypse Stein right there, not my IQ. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, these guys are great, and they are 150% metal. Oh, they are. The... <laughs> so, sometimes they, for sure, they are more metal than Ramstein, if you think about it. Yeah. Because Ramstein has metal some songs people. that are, like, yeah. you know, hard rockish, you know? Yeah. But, man. This is, this is metal right here. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you like death metal, then listen to their early albums because their early albums are very very death metal. If you okay. like power metal, their more recent albums are very power metal. <laughs> so yeah, like or if you like both, then listen to them all, <laughs> like us. <Yeah. laughs> if you just like any metal genre, ever. Listen to yeah. this band because they are so good. Like yes. they are definitely my favorite band besides Ramstein. And and I would say the Scorpions, but Scorpions aren't really metal technically. But just well, coming from are, Germany. They're, all, they're an 80s metal. <laughs> yeah. Coming from Germany, my th top 3 favorite bands is Ramstein, <laughs> Scorpions, and then the Apocalypse Steinleiter. Yeah, it's, it's a tongue twister. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so the album uh, "Litched," which uh, means light, is probably my favorite album. For uh, sure, I definitely yeah. agree with that. It's so good. Yeah. Like it's 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 one of their more power metal albums, but it is just so good. Um, every song is just so catchy, and like but heavy at the same time and then you get towards the end of the album and the song uh monster or no not monster uh that was the Oomph album adrenaline yeah right yeah. yeah yeah that one is just so heavy hitting it's like oh you're just like ready to like fight an army after listening to that you're like, bring it let's and, go right now the Oh man, I can just go on and on about their albums. I haven't heard all of their albums all the way through. I probably heard Lish and Samurai all the way through. But I have Samurai not... is a really great one too. There has not been a single song by this band that I have not felt the need to endlessly headbang to. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I say oh, endlessly, yeah. but I mean the song obviously ends and really the whole album does, but, you know, that's besides the point. Yeah. <laughs> when, you're, when you're trying to describe something, how awesome something is, logic doesn't necessarily come to mind. Yeah. But, um, even, uh, I don't know how recent they've put out music, but I know they put out another album after List called uh, The Bolton, I think. And that one was pretty good, too. Also very power metal. Yeah. Samurai was uh, kind of an in-between album. They still had, yeah. they had their power metal elements at that point, but they were still, like, I feel a bit heavier than, like, Lished. Like, Lished is heavy, but, like, in a power metal way. Yeah. And I feel like Samurai was a little bit more death metal heavy. If that makes sense, I don't know. What do you think? You're a little bit more... This is more your expertise, but that's kind of how I feel about it anyway. I don't know if I'm explaining yeah. it well. Sam... 
I mean, I honestly think th this band is almost like the perfect mix of power metal and death metal. I, I would agree. <laughs> I mean, you can say this album's more this, this album's more this, but honestly, it just comes down to this band is power death metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they did, I'm looking it up now, they did have an album in 2017, and they're still present, like they're still what was, playing. What was the 2017 one called? Der Rot Reiter. Probably okay. pursuing the pronunciation. But, um, uh, Die Rot Reiter. Yeah, that'd be the Red Rider. I've not heard of that one. So I didn't, the last one that I've heard of them coming out was Die Bolton, I think it was called. Or maybe that was just a song on it. That's probably just a song, because I'm not seeing anything. Especially after Lish. And, mm -hmm. my goodness, we have to talk about this song. I mean, this album, Riders of the Storm. My goodness. Oh, yeah. The one between Samurai oh, and... So epic. Oh my gosh. That was the most epic song, like, ever. <laughs> they Trust... do have a good bit of English on the... Um on the Samurai album, too. Yeah. If... I'm gonna narrow this down. And, uh, you know, if you like any form of heavy metal, listen to this band. And if... It's like... I honestly... It's one of those bands that are just so good that I honestly can't understand anybody who wouldn't like them. Especially if they're into metal. Yeah. Because, like I said, it's just a such a good blend between power metal and death metal. Which is two like completely different genres yeah. that have completely different fan bases, you know? Yeah. Like, one's more melodic and opera sounding. The other is super brutal and growling. Yeah. The kind and of stuff that will... Perfectly. Yeah, it's so amazing. Yeah. So amazing. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at their albums now. So Lished was 2008. Yeah. Um, I had it pulled up here too. Yeah, so the one that I was thinking of, the last one I saw come out, was uh, Moral and Bonson. And that's the Moral one that I think Bonson. had the song Be Bolton on it. Yeah. So I have not heard anything from Die Rota Reiter. Yeah, I haven't either. Have I've heard a little that. bit from all their albums except for that one. Mm. I've heard a couple songs from Teif Typha, Teif Typha, the 2014 one. Oh, Teif Typha? Yeah. Hmm, I've Man, not heard I, of that one. I love some of their early stuff too. Like, their first couple albums are just so good. Yeah. What is it? Nuclear Blast Showdown? Is that their earliest one? I think yeah. I might have heard that one. And then the album All You no, Need no. Is Love. Yeah. We can honestly no. just keep going on and on and name all these songs and be like, oh, that's such a good one. Be like <laughs> total nerds about it. But mm -hmm. I, I honestly think that my statement earlier was the best way to sum it up. The power, death metal. Check them out. Yeah. Recommend them. Highly recommend them. If there's one oh, yeah. band on this on either of our lists that you listen to if you just want to pick one pick this one not because yeah. it's number one but i mean because they're number one <laughs> yeah and like i said searching for it just type in the apocalyptic writers in english or d-a-r and you should find it yeah and i just yeah, type the german in. word for apocalyptic is just <laughs> insanely yeah. hard to pronounce i just put in <laughs> typed in die like d i e and then a p and it's usually like one of the like suggestions in the search mm. bar you definitely know if you don't know how to spell it you definitely know what it looks like the apocalyptic stein writer yeah just know how to spell de, de and writer <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> my good Goodness, I don't even think most Germans know how to spare Apocalyptic Stein. No, <laughs> they, they probably do that. That's just a bad joke. You get like a ton of Germans like 
What? Actually, this is a simple word for us. <laughs> I wrote that one out. This this stupid Americana. I learned that word when I was like two. <laughs> I, I learned yeah. how to pronounce that word and spell it when I was like two, drinking in the pub with my father. <laughs> I don't know why I would think that a two-year-old German would be drinking in a pub. I don't know. That's just something I threw in there. Thought it would be funny. <laughs> well, he'd be drinking beer for sure. I don't know if they call them pubs in Germany or not. Yeah, probably you know? not. <laughs> That's a UK thing. Well, I think uh, you got to be 16 to drink in public in Germany. 16. To drink in public. Yeah. To drink in public. I've not seen anything that actually has a legal drinking age. It's just like in public Jeez. you got to be. I want to go to Germany now. <laughs> but I mean, it doesn't matter because I'm already 21. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I definitely recommend all the bands on there. Oh, honorable mentions and our number five was different, but four onwards were pretty much all the same. We just had two and three switched. Yeah. But Power Wolf, check them yeah. out. Konokotor, check him out. Oomph, check him out. Eyes Bashir, the Apocalypse Steinreiter, Mega Hearts, and Blind Guardian, and Halloween. Yep. All those Roman yeah. bands, check him out. So, yeah. <laughs> um, sure. Any closing comments? My brother? Uh, I don't think so. Uh,. If anybody likes uh, movie collecting, follow me on Instagram. It's uh, VilCamps93. VilCamps93. I'll type it. I'll try to get a link in there. Oh, you can link it? Okay, that'd be great. Well, with YouTube, anyway. I don't know about Podbean. Might be a little different there. I'll at least type it in the description. So people can get to it. It's it's VilCamps, but it's like with W... Yeah. Because German. <laughs> German. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing I had you on this episode because just me talking about German stuff would have been pathetic. <laughs> yeah. So well I'm the one who kinda introduced it to you because I got so into Ramstein and then that made me want to learn German in high school and Yeah. And I got into Cuba, so Okay, so I guess that will wrap things up with the second episode here. Um, thank you for tuning in. I'm Ian Survey, and I'm the Metal Gladiator Pod. Uh, I'm the Metal Gladiator. Thank you for listening to the Metal Gladiator podcast. Um, I'll try to keep this consistent. I don't know. I haven't really come up with any kind of schedule yet because I want to have guests. Every now and again, I don't want to keep doing this by myself. Because I, I literally just did that whole episode by myself. William actually doesn't really exist. He's just a figment of my imagination. <laughs> no. Go follow William on Instagram if you like movie collecting. Um, I have a YouTube channel if you listen to this on YouTube. Subscribe, I guess. More. There's definitely more of this to come. If you're YouTube only or podcast podbean only go to the other platform and listen to it give it a like all that blah 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 anyway that's it and see you on the next episode